<laughs> refuse. It's too late. <laughs> is it done? Yeah, we're, is it done? We're, I'm not, we're, we're here. I'm not, I was about to say, I'm not even on screen yeah. right now. <laughs> Hello, all you beautiful, beautiful people that oh, so we, we must be want that golden chart. You want that sweet, sweet golden <laughs> chart, don't you? Hey, don't you, guys? Don't you? Thanks for getting Wasabi to a thousand subscribers. A day late, dollar short, but we thank you. We'll come up with a we'll come up with a new goal for you guys mm. on uh, on Coffee or Brands channel next week. Oh yeah, we'll find yeah. a way to beat around the bush. We we'll, we'll keep <laughs> we'll dangling that carrot. This. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it just just close enough for you guys to obtain. Just just enough where you might actually I, get I one. I bet you days. want that. I bet you want that chart, don't you guys? <laughs> it's like uh, what's the best incentive, carrot or the stick? You guys choose. But how's yeah, everybody just, doing? New all time highs yeah. today. Feels like every Dude, day, man. Every day. New all time highs. Dude, every every uh it's like every fifteen minute candle, new all time high. It's <laughs> the daily chart I mean, yeah. is just green candles everywhere. Yeah, we're getting spoiled. Yeah. I feel like you know, all the new guys on here, um, they're gonna get used to this and think it's a coin that only goes up. So I wanna be the first one to say, you know, don't just think coins only go up and I don't wanna kill your vibe, but uh you know, it's going to probably go up until the launch phase because I don't see any reason for people to sell before that. If anybody doesn't know, the reason that people are buying up the hex price so much is because they want to give it away to get in early on the ground floor of a brand new revolutionary network called Pulse Chain. So I feel like we probably got a lot of repeat customers here, but if you're new and you live under <laughs> a rock, for you, you haven't for heard you of Pulse two, Chain. For you two new guys here, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't yeah. know what's going on yet. Pulse Chain yeah. coming, yeah. coming soon. <laughs> Yeah, we're already on for the first time, so good to see you. Yeah, oh, yeah. so we, we yeah, we have we have uh, we have guest. Maddie on, on stream today. So Maddie Allen. I know the Hexicans definitely know Maddie. And then I uh, for anybody that's new watching the stream, uh, make sure to follow Maddie's Twitter as well. It's posted in the description of the video. Um I guess we can make it we could do a formal introduction or we could we could pretty much do anything. I guess Maddie, did you wanna I guess Let's do the formal speak to, Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's my favorite Nailed show. It. Yeah. Which uh, is Knights of the Crypto Roundtable. I I do watch your guys' show religiously because you're all such experts on hex and other cryptocurrencies as well. And so and I also I, I like your style. You know, you guys you guys always have a good time on your show and it, it shows and that's that's what the viewers love, such as myself. So Thank you so much for having me on. I, uh, um, so I, you know, came onto the scene with Hex Cameos, which is where I paid celebrities. I wasn't showing my face yet because RG3 hadn't given me the talk yet. But um, so, you know, we had these videos promoting Hex where celebrities were shouting out to Richard Hart and to Hex and they didn't really know what it was that they were doing, but we still got that playlist that there awesome. at uh, hexcameo.com. You had a lot of good people. You, you had a uh, who did you have on? Uh, Can, uh, Game, Game of Thrones guy. Game of Thrones guy. Kevin from the hold, office, I think. Hold the door. Yeah. <laughs> hold the door. Hold the door. Wait, Maddie, do you do you uh, do you still have those readily available? Yeah. Can you run the Carol Baskins one? That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Now it's yeah. Very Carol relevant, Baskin wants it? you to buy. She's hacks. coming out with uh, Catcoin. It's already like starting to get. She, I saw that. It's, that's how you know, know the, sad, top, the top is in the sad part <laughs> yeah. is probably it's probably going to do well with all the different dog coins to just come out with like it if it actually starts like gaining traction like it'll probably actually do well a billion dollar market cap <laughs> yeah the the lady that covered her husband in sardine oil is probably gonna get stupid rich off cat coin mm. <clears throat> i never finished that series i didn't, I didn't see that part well the <clears throat> the oh, main what, coins the tiger uh, king <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, she, the, she. If you want to get a tiger to eat your husband, evidently, or a body, <laughs> or a body, you just cover him in okay. sardine oil. That's the way to do it, evidently. If you wanted to, if you want to, not mm -hmm. not that you ever did that or anything, but that's how you would do it. That's how you do it. So I got this share screen up here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Wasabi, you gotta click. Yeah. And so this is a playlist called <laughs> "What Is Hex and Hex Cameos." So it's got three videos that explain hex to somebody who's new in less than 10 minutes. And so we love those. And then the hex 2020 rewind had to put that in there. And then here's all the hex cameos that have been done. We have miss Kentucky. She was kind of the test for miss, um, miss America. 
And then we have Eva Elfi. That was the most popular one. Not sure why. People doing their own research, maybe. And then <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, uh, Kevin from The Office, the 55th president of Mexico. Whoa. <laughs> I never no saw that no one. Shit. <laughs> Maddie, can you link it in the uh, in the chat? Someone's asking. Well, well, sure. well he's, about, he's about to play a couple. Yeah, play yeah, like Carol Baskin. Oh, and, and then, uh, oh, I guess it's, okay, is I this is, wait, hold on. Uh, BM sold hold huddle hex. Go down that uh, the video you yeah. just scroll past. Is that the is that the guy that Richard's been putting on blast the past couple of days? Yeah. That okay, that's why I thought. Did, doesn't he live in his mom's basement during that interview? Like, was it that? <laughs> oh, Brad, Brad Mills, Brad Mills. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's his basement. Oh, right. I thought it was his mom's basement. Eh, same thing. Yeah. I, I could have sworn that was people, his space basement. <laughs> funny when people double down when they're wrong, you know, like, like dude, just accept the defeat, man. Just, you know, yeah. accept or just be quiet. <laughs> but don't yeah, double right. down. Like, come on, dude. Brand, they always great. do. You're, you're right, though. Like, people don't want to admit it, so they'll cope so hard to just be like, no, it's definitely a scam. Like, it's it's never going to work because I lost it's, money. It's okay to be it's okay to be wrong. You just it's it's better to admit when you're wrong and and learn from it than just outright deny and like you said double down. It's just not the way to go. You lose yeah. credibility. So he he bought um I think 8 million hacks for a quarter of a bitcoin back when it was mm -hmm. Satoshi's and he didn't believe in the project. He just heard that Richard went on with uh that one guy that we hate the most. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, gotcha. He was just trading the news. I, uh, I mean, does uh, Peter it start McCormick. With the, yeah, I was um, about to say. So. He was trading the Peter McCormick interview, and then so he, but then he sold out, maybe at a loss or at a slight uh, increase. But he he would have if he had staked, he would he would have over a million dollars worth of hex now. Um, <laughs> But so uh, yeah, the the reason I made this like I I wouldn't be mean to anybody except for him <laughs> because the whole time that Richard did an interview with him on Christmas he was talking over Richard explaining why hex wouldn't work, uh, you know, giving explanations of how hex should be different and it's like he didn't get it like hex is a finished product. Yeah, you can't change it. It's like the video I did with BitBoy. <laughs> There's just those select individuals that you know they need a little bit of, a little poking and prodding. Yeah, play the Car play the Carol Baskins one. I like that one. <laughs> hey, all you cool cats and kittens! It's Carol Baskin from Big Cat Rescue. Joe Hexo, I am told that you are such a cool cat. Oh my gosh. Yes, Maddie tells me that you are just the BFF and that you are celebrating one year of sobriety. Congratulations. I know how hard that is. Oh my gosh, do I know how hard that is? I was a drunk up until 1979. And that's when I got pregnant and decided I was not going to do that to my baby. And so I have been abstaining since 1979. It's more you crave the idea of being catatonic. Yeah, that was fun. You got a lot of extra uh, information. now because I understand that your <laughs> YouTube show is about struggle and recovery and helping others to improve and that you are involved in the crypto community. And the crypto community has got to be doing really amazing right now. You know, the only part of the crypto community that I ever got involved in was crypto kitties. I thought that was so fun. I love those crypto kitties. Oh, of course, of them. course you did. Be a little yeah. I think, and I, I never did purchase the first one. I almost did. I tried lining up all of the ether and everything you got to do, and decided that was too much hassle. It's it's hard. It's hard for no coiners. Pin numbers for all of that stuff, and so pin oh, numbers. Boy, <laughs> probably should have. I don't know how that fits into all of the crypto stuff that's going on right now, but it looks like people who have tested in crypto really made some smart ideas or investments in that. I wish that I had, but it sounds like you are investing in yourself and in others by helping everyone improve their mental health through experience and strength and hope. All of, all of those are great things. You are just the cat's meow. Oh, absolutely. I hope 2021 is your most tigerific year ever. Stay cool, cats. Mwah. So many puns. <sighs> yep. <You're being> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, yeah, that was so awesome, Maddie. We, we we may have accidentally given her the idea for the next Doge coin. Could have with her new so, cat coin. We should yeah. get paid. <laughs> we should pay me. us a cat coin, lady. <laughs> I'm good. I'll take free cat coin. Cloud chasing. If it's worth it, they cloud chasing. Oh. V Vitalik sure took that is a uh, free Shiba coins in there. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Shiba, so, yeah. so let me explain the the story about that. Apparently, the, the people that made Shiba Coin, obviously, it's a, a shitty ripoff of Dogecoin, right? They're just trying to ride the hype wave. We've seen it time and time again. Apparently, for whatever goddamn idiotic reason, they gave half the entire supply to uh, Vitalik, thinking that he wouldn't sell. <laughs> like, no what does way. he do? He he's like, well. I got all this random shit coin in my wallet. I'm just going to donate it all to charity. And he billions. literally crashed the price billions of dollars overnight. He didn't rug technically because a rug pull is like liquidity pull. But I mean, he sold everything. He, he just dumped it all because like why? And this is why you don't give whales a shit ton of coins. This is why in Pulse Chain, Richard Hart's going to delete or he's going to remove a lot of the, the big Ethereum whales from the pool because they don't want to. We don't want another uh, Shiba coin situation on our hands. I wonder. I wonder if there's a story behind that because all those new dog coins, all of them, they all decide. I guess they're probably run by all the same people because they all decide to give uh, Vitalik half the supply, which just didn't make any sense to me at the time. Like, you, you give someone that many free coins for doing nothing, and they don't. They Why? don't value. They don't value. Yeah. It. yeah. There, there's some speculation around uh, Shiba right now on Reddit. So, with the emergence of Binance Smart Chain, there's there's some speculation right now that it kind of ties to Binance. And then uh, if the Ethereum network is spammed, it just, it gives that, it puts them in a better position as like a low, like a lower fee, like right. alternative or something like that. So there, there's all sorts of speculation. I mean, this isn't the first time uh, CZ is like a uh, try to do like what's referred to. Uh, well, I got this term from DC, but he calls it a vampire attack. So yeah. there could be all kinds of vampire attacks you see on ethereum because the gas fee issue is going to be uh i think it's going to be horrendous for a large a large part of this market market cycle it's really bad it really is i think, I think it's like going to definitely genius. fuel it's <laughs> yeah. going to definitely fuel the extended uh sell-off period that i think we're about to experience mm -hmm. in, in general crypto not hacks obviously but uh, mm -hmm. uh i mean because of the gas fees nobody can get in and i think there's going to be a couple months sell-off in the whole eth price maybe near the end of may we might have one more bounce left in ethereum but uh yeah, like a vampire tech as an example, Sushi was a vampire tech on Uniswap. It's basically just the crypto version of clout chasing. Like, you see a good idea? Oh, it's a really good idea. If we slap a token on that bad boy or if we fucking, like, you know, make some other little thing for people to ape into, you know, we could basically steal all their mind share, steal all their mental energy. And, uh, and that's what people do time and time again. So, I mean, you can even say Pulse Chain is, I mean, it's not really a vampire attack because we want Ethereum to succeed, obviously, but it's more of a, a safe, like greener pastures kind of a better way. To me, it's vertical integration for Hex, to be honest. If you own the whole entire, uh, you know, manufacturing process, like if you own the whole means of production, like you can have such a more efficient system. So to me, I look at it as the launch pad for Hex, but hey, other people are welcome because you're really not going to clog up our blockchain until pulse chain is worth you know ten thousand dollars which maybe it will be one day and we'll cross that bridge when we get there but i don't see that happening for at least 10 years so we're basically yeah. buying ourselves more time with pulse chain yep yeah and, and and plus it was i mean it was pretty much like a necessity for uh hack staking because it's it's not really reasonable for people to have to pay these these uh absolutely crazy fees to miners just to mince uh, or stake their coins so uh that's going to resolve a lot of that issue I, I think this is basically a good example of a uh, of a network that has like um there's actually like a utility that it is kind of being initially bootstrapped off of which is the hex staking and then there's all sorts of other stuff that can build on top of that so uh whereas in the, in the case for binance smart chain i think there was more of a that that was basically like a they they had a they, a lot of that was uh, more done uh, I guess, as you suggest like it was a more malicious attack on the network which honestly I don't I don't really care because Ethereum does have to get like the the development around it's kind of a it's truthfully a mess but that's kind of what you run into with uh, a decentralized community so to say uh, but the trade off on that is the speed 
and there's there's other networks that are going to be up and running um, because the world is simply going to look at alternatives. And yep. in my from my viewpoint, Pulse is a good alternative for uh, the staking. And then there's all sorts sorts of other cool stuff that could come come from that. So uh, yeah. I think all of that looks great. Yeah, it seems inevitable to me that we're moving towards a multi-chain environment and Pulse yeah. is simply mm -hmm. a new home for Hex. That's going to be such a great user experience because not only is it nearly free to transact, but it's 4x throughput, so it's three second block times. So it's fast mm -hmm. and dirt, dirt cheap. So not only is it a great home for Hex, but it's a great place for other communities and maybe even new projects to start off on. I've seen two mm -hmm. new projects already that have claimed to be launching their first project <laughs> on Hex. Luminati, on, let's go. On, on, yeah, Lu <laughs> Luminati. And uh, there's one other one. There, we, no, we have our own uh, very own dog coin now. It's like Doji Inu or something. Mm. And oh, so God. they're launching some shit dog coin. <laughs> no, no offense, guys. I mean, it might be a good coin. Who knows? <laughs> you guys, you guys but, uh, know who you are. Yeah, there's gonna be a, a dog coin of our own. I mean, what's a what's a blockchain without a dog dog themed coin, right? Yeah, you're not gonna like the way that you don't have your own dog. <laughs> I like the way that Richard advertises Pulse Chain, right? That it's not necessarily, um, you know, right off back going to like compete uh, com compete directly with Ethereum, but also like reduce the load on on the network itself and i think all of us like wasabi alluded to would be you know happy to see some of that die down but doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon you know so there's there's got to be a solution and then also one of the things kind of in line with that is uh um johnny chaos he did like a little thing for like coinbase a lot of the influencers and just hexagons mm -hmm. are doing a uh, promotional video for coinbase to possibly list a uh, hex so that'd be pretty cool yeah, yeah. They're, they're sorry go ahead motley no you're good go ahead oh yeah i was just i was just gonna mention uh because this is even to brand's comment so he said imagine pulse experience is identical to your experience on l2 except no bridging back and forth so he's actually right on with that and in the case for ethereum l2 it's still very far away from being uh, a good user experience so uh there there's early uh there's there's early uh projects in the space now that are that are experimenting with optimism but there's a lot of pieces that have to come together for that to work which at some point in time it it likely will but it's still it's it's in my opinion too far out uh in this bull market it you're it's going to be in my opinion months and maybe even a year mm -hmm. before l2 is properly running because the only way layer two is going to uh really be a big boom is if exchanges like coinbase actually adopt it and i think they're going to be a, be a bottleneck in a lot of that stuff if coinbase hit or kind of drags their feet on the l2 adoption then users that are buying coins through the main on ramps are going to be withdrawing their funds onto l1 and then it just sucks having to move those funds then onto L2. It's just, it's a really bad, it's a really bad user experience to, to, to do that, especially for somebody mm -hmm. that's just learning how to use this kind of stuff. So until Coinbase yep. adopts it, it's it's really just not gonna be, it's gonna be more of a niche in my opinion. Uh, and then that goes back to, to uh, uh, Coffee's point with the, with the multi-chain environment. So uh, Ethereum helped scale Bitcoin when Bitcoin hit its bottleneck. And that, and then now other networks are scaling Ethereum as Ethereum hits its bottlenecks, and that's a great way to put what it. I think is going to be more likely. Yeah, yeah, and and it's and, just going to be better to toggle back and forth between the two, getting rid of that whole that issue. Like if you guys use Quick Swap, it it was a nightmare. I mean, Coffee made a great video on how to set it up and get started, but like if you gave that to a no co coiner, no, 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 no chance. Use. Like yeah, there's no there's no way. It was way too much, way too nerve wracking. They would have fucked it up. It would have been. They, it's yeah. just not a good it's not good for the new users I think whereas well, you have you now, have developers making all this crazy awesome technology and really pushing the limits and it's cool but i think a lot of times what we forget is people need to use this shit normal everyday people yeah. like you and me and your grandma and your uncle that called you when bitcoin reached 60k and then wanted to know how to get in so those kind of people we need to save and i think what the real strategic direction that we're taking with pulse chain which is actually the right direction is to build on l1 like to build a, a fee-less, uh, you know, even 0% inflation, deflationary currency on L1. Uh, and the more of these we have, anybody could really do it, right? There's the argument of, oh, well, can't anybody just make a fork of ETH now? What's going to stop them? It's like, yeah, I mean, maybe every coin should be vertically integrated if they were smart. But, you know, it's going to be a hex, very hex-centric environment at first. And uh, I will not be riding any magic carpets. Sorry, DCC.
<laughs> I'm not getting in the comments, but yeah. can't make it in. Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah, out of here, tool. Why, why, don't you, why, don't, why don't you explain to the audience about your magical carpet? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tell come us on here. What's the, what's the circulating supply of your magic carpet ride? <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> but no, it, it was nice because if you guys use QuickSwap, I mean, you could do thousands of transactions for essentially a fraction of a penny. One Matic le lasted you yep. forever. So you're going you're gonna to yep. get that same experience on on pulse chain but it's going to be the ui is going to be much much better like it it's all about the interaction and adoption especially with these new no corners like if they can't operate it, it's it's useless so just having being able to toggle a metamask is gonna be so much better yeah yeah and and, and one thing i i do want to uh share uh what coffee has on uh has on the share screen right now so uh because okay. i'm sure i'm sure there's gonna be a, a, like a lot of new viewers to this stuff and as far as the game theory and staking uh, Coffee's been Coffee's uh, one of the or he's basically like the day one one of the day one OGs in day the two. hex community. So there's or day two day two OG. So there's a lot that he can Damn. Uh, for, for uh, anybody that's new that's coming in. So I'll let uh, Coffee uh, take it from here. Thanks, no man. Steak, yeah, no staker badge. Real, <laughs> I know, right? Well, it's actually good. I don't I don't want that badge. The, um, the FOMO one. <laughs> yeah, the over FOMO. Yeah. So, guys, if you're brand new to crypto, if you're brand new to Hex, you're in the right place. If you're new to crypto, man, you really stumbled on the right rabbit hole because um, this is basically a course that I run called HexPassiveIncome.com. It's only 100 bucks. It's half off right now. It's a bull run sale. You can get it by going to HexPassiveIncome.com, watch the video. And uh, if you're wondering just what it's all about, it's really just about how to set up, how to go from a complete no coiner, which means someone that's totally new to crypto, to you know everything to set up all the right mindset that you need to succeed all the right security measures you need to take to not get hacked because let's be honest people are getting hacked left and right and then finally how to buy hacks when to buy hacks where to buy hacks best time to buy hacks and answering a lot of the commonly asked questions for a newbie and finally getting into what's called a staking ladder which is really the crux of the uh strategy it's a passive income investing strategy that's working for thousands of people it's working for probably most people in this chat i would venture to guess about 90 percent of this chat has their own staking ladder and is similar to a CD ladder in the real world, right? And it's changing people's lives, right? Like this guy made a thousand dollars after staking six months. And that's, you know, only one of many success stories. You know, the more you put in, the more you could potentially gain. Obviously no promises. I don't know what the price will do. Crypto tends to dip 70% from time to time. So you really need nerves of steel if you're gonna get into crypto in general. And I like to say the price of the extreme volatility or the benefit of the extreme volatility is outsized potential mad gains, right? Huge returns that comes at the expense of volatility. So if you don't have the stomach to hold through these massive dips, you know, maybe crypto is not for you. Maybe don't even get involved because it's really not for the faint of heart. But Hex really fixes a lot of this mentality shifting because it switches you to a longer term mindset. And if you're making interest the entire time you're staked and you're staked out for one year, two years, three years, et cetera, that interest can offset any potential loss. And we're in a bull market right now. So I mean, you're looking at a, a, at least maybe a couple more months to a year of mad gains. And then when the when the bear market inevitably comes around, again, in the course, I'll tell you all this, like we don't beat around the bush. The bear market's coming and you want to be in something that's long term, a stable, secure store of value that will really, really probably change your life. I mean, it changed my life. And this is how a lot of us on the stream right now have reached financial freedom. So also, if you're a hex, you know, OG hexagon, we got a referral program. So you know, if you want to earn 40 bucks, 80 bucks for onboarding a new user and you don't want to take the time to walk them through, set up the affiliate link up here in the top corner and just go make an account for yourself. And uh, oh, and we'll close that off. And that's that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Hex is pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're new, it's definitely a good course. You should go check it yeah. out. It'll yeah, definitely yeah. help you out. De definitely go check it out because then uh, you're not going to be kind of a deer in the headlights when it comes to mm -hmm. the whole T-shares, like how to set up, how to, how to really plan around that stuff. So uh, and, uh, as I always say, instead of making the mistakes and, and paying for those mistakes, just uh, just buy something that gives you the information you need and it's it's and the grand scheme of things it's a very low um it's a very low overhead cost it's a very high overhead cost if you don't know what the fuck you're doing um in this market which is most uh cool. no coiners that end up getting wrecked on the meme coins because even if we go to uh because what we could do is we actually we could actually pull up some charts now in the case for for hex it's been basically completely immune to a lot of these price dips that we're seeing. And th this isn't the first time 
we've seen that. I mean, Hex basically blasted through the whole uh, COVID sell-off, and we're seeing a very similar pattern play out now where uh, the cycles on Hex are tend to be staggered relative to the market, which is very amazing during these periods of times because while everybody else is freaking out the hex community is obvious they're just they're just hitting <laughs> just higher, celebrating higher every day. so yeah. uh if we actually pull up um and th this kind of goes to this a lot of this kind of just goes to the um uh the, the greater market and again i would say this this doesn't mm -hmm. this doesn't include uh hex because hex is is doing its own thing right now it's doing amazing uh, but in terms of the market uh, right now, uh, Bitcoin to USD is testing its 20-week moving average. This is actually the first time we're seeing a retest of this moving average since September of 2020 before entering this uh, huge breakout. And uh, we know yeah. a lot of this. A lot of this is is driven at least recently by the uh, by a lot of the narratives we're seeing with on on Twitter. I know Elon posted his concerns uh environment like it's his environmental concerns uh but even even if you look at what it was doing on the daily chart beforehand uh there was actually weakness on the bitcoin to usd chart even before uh even before elon elon sweet i think a lot of it just kind of accelerated the inevitable retest we're going to see so <clears throat> this kind of volatility uh this is just part of the ride for for crypto and and if you look at what you know bitcoin's doing recently it's it's in a pretty gnarly uh, weekly red candle. If we actually flip over to the hex price chart, it, it's 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 actually at a new all time high as as I pull up the price chart. So now we, um, we 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 were higher than that, weren't we? Didn't we wake up to like seven uh, cents? You know what? You I, might be right. Me, I bought at seven cents. Uh, oh God. <laughs> Matt, he's like, I caught that. I caught that wake up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all right, Matty. I caught the I caught the wake up to like four point seven cents. Then we went back down to four point one. Then look at us now, mm -hmm. like it's literally all time highs every every other day. I'm, so I'm proud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, doesn't even it doesn't even phase me now. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're we're kind of talking about this uh uh in the polls chain chat where we're in this unique situation where like usually you wouldn't buy into these these kind of pumps, but just with like the dynamics of how this sacrifice phase is going to intertwine with hex and the uh the price pumping of hex and then going into the pulse chain airdrop like it's just it's the perfect storm like yeah I, I, are... I don't even mind buying into this i really don't mm -hmm. yeah people are buying pulse now uh mm -hmm. right ahead of Buy, the, buying ahead pulse? of time oh you're talking because, about as far because as because they're buying hex. hex and the price yep. of hex is going up right yeah, yeah why not are... right why not ride the pump and increase your usd value yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what if you're are really smart, doing. you would have bought the dip two weeks ago and <laughs> you would have really enjoyed this pump. Yeah. And what, but, <clears throat> what's really what's really good, too, is like we have volume. There's volume coming into the price charts. This is amazing. This, yeah. I love to see this. So uh, this is a this is the, a legit pump. This isn't rising on low volume. There's um, there's big money that's stepping in. And, and this is just a, a full time lapse of the entire price history that that we see now. So. Uh, already the third weekly green candle, and we know how fast it can go just based off the historical. I mean, uh, this previous impulse, this was actually during the whole uh, huge COVID sell-off, but Hex basically blasted through that. So it's it's basically now just uh, repeating that cycle and and gonna hit uh, basically a new a new high, and then that's gonna shift up the the, the price floor. So um, personally, I, I think if you if you ended up buying through this entire consolidation. I to this day I will say you're you're not going to see these prices anymore. Um, these prices so are what gone. So will be. Um, so that's a good question uh, as far as the the price floor. Uh, if we, I think it's going to be hard to answer that until we know where the next local top is. Uh, seven to ten I cents. Say, I think seven <laughs> to ten cents is a pretty reasonable. Um, estimate. So if you're, let's say, a, a squid, th this is why I really think 2021 is going to be the year of the squids where they, they end up, um, depending on how Wait. many features you have, All right. you're, you're, you're <laughs> going to see basically a, a million in staker apps sometime, um, sometime at sometime before the closure of this year. So, and, and mm -hmm. think about it. If you, if you're, uh, if, just multiply, you know, anywhere from just just look at how much interest you would be gaining in terms of USD at different price levels, like six cents, seven cents, eight cents, nine cents, ten cents. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people in this community even now 
that yeah. uh, their interest, if let's say they're they're a, a mid to, to upper tier squid, they're going to be getting paid more interest than what their what their jobs pay them. Even if they even if they 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 have like an engineering or, or finance That's job awesome. or, or some some higher end job, it's very likely you're going to see higher payouts. In my opinion, from this point on, for um, basically 500 plus T shares, I think is going to be is going to become. That's gonna. That's like the next. Um, that's like the next band that's gonna really ascend, and then you're gonna start to see more and more of that. Like I, I, I and this is this is something that uh, uh, even even before all of this happens, I mean, the, these wave these wave threes and the cycles are so parabolic, and it's it's literally life changing. <laughs> you can see that. Three three <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're we living through that. it right now. Like this is yeah. what it feels like to live yeah. through it. So just like take a breath and realize that you're you're in the the parabola right now. Pretty um, euphoric. I want to talk about what, oh, yeah, financial escape velocity. Exactly. Like if your interest payments can generate more than your, your job payments to me, and, <laughs> and, you know, every quarter or every six months, you can you can scrape off or sell the interest and, and pay for your life. That's, to me, that's yeah. financial escape velocity. Um, the speed of two Hefe said, don't panic. I bought the all-time high of 0.033. So I want to talk about that because imagine the feeling of buying the all-time high and then it dipped 70%. But then look where we're at now. And I bet Despita 2 Hefe is like, yeah, right. Like 0.03 is like an anthill right now. It's like a little yep. tiny mound of dirt. And we're like at the top of the mountain. So hold. that's what it means. If you're, if you're not being held, if you're not holding during these long periods of time. And at the local time when he bought that, he probably, you know, felt bad that he bought the all-time high. But, you know, if he held through it and he had the strong hands, obviously he, he probably staked long-term. You know, now he's sitting at, what is that like a 15x 20x gain at least um mm -hmm. also i think the speed of two half it means uh fire your boss so that's a pretty cool name yep mm, okay yeah i don't i, I, think, don't, I uh, think that's what that means Rob, i think yeah unfor unfortunately i don't i don't think uh streamer pulls in all the all the comments over from youtube otherwise i'd pull it up on the uh, on the screen so uh, it's up a little bit but yeah is it okay i'm a little i'm a little behind if you just if you just open up your youtube channel in another tab wasabi you can click over every now and then yeah, I, I know you won't be able to pull it up, but you can I don't know about it. you guys, but uh, with all this price pumping and whatnot, uh, the people that I told that I you know talked about getting into hex a long time ago that never did, they're like, finally all at once, right? Like, brand, 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 how do I get in? You know, trying mm -hmm. to uh, get in. So, uh, that's another reason why something like Coinbase might be you know very easy because the the if you can reduce the amount of steps that it takes to get in whether that's via Staker app or something like it on Coinbase and then taking possession, then people are more likely to act on it. Um, Cause sometimes people see like, Oh, okay. This is going to take, you know, a couple hours. It's, it's not as easy as one, two, three Robin hood, you know, and then they get discouraged from actually doing it. But those that do, as you can see, become uh, very rewarded and especially for their patients, like dispute a to have a mentioned. So as long as you've got a, you know, not a trader's mentality and you can buy and hold and, and hold on the dips, then with, with something like Hex, it's a valuable asset and it's only going to do uh, significantly better from here. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if we even go back to the, let's actually pull up the, the price chart again, because uh, yeah, it gives you, well, it, round two, first, let's go. Right, round two. Uh, well, because it, it even goes back to the whole, uh, it, when we're talking about price dips, um, you basically have to retune your brain to be able to uh, just accept the the volatility for what it is, because this, this is just the nature of any cryptocurrency is going to be very volatile, even in its consolidation range. For example, if you look at the local top during the one wave, uh, the volatility even from that to its local bottom was a 65% dip. Um, but then, if you look at the the impulse that it's in now, which uh, this isn't, this is not not done. But if you measure it even from um, this local bottom up to where it's at now, this is up thirty one x, thirty one x, literally. And and even if you have, let's say, uh, the price goes to um, this unimaginable high, it's not going to go back to these support levels anymore. These are just. Um, a thing of the past, and you, you have to basically recalibrate uh, what uh, is, let's say, an acceptable range for you to, to enter, and then just kind of cost average your way. And that's that's really the the only way to uh, to really do it. And then at some point, you you do get these really big moves. 
Um, if you look, let's try to imagine those highs. <laughs> yeah, let's try. Let's try. To imagine let's those try. Highs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you well the three wave, um, if you measure, let's say, the bottom to the top of the one wave, this was a, uh, this was basically a, a almost the ten thousand percent move on the weekly chart. On the daily chart, you'll you'll hit the ten thousand percent, and then if you measure from the bottom of the uh, the T wave, so you have the corrective T wave into the three wave. Um, this expansion can actually, it can actually exceed this percent that you saw during the one wave. It's it's possible, um, and for something like X, I think it's absolutely possible to to, pull, to do because um, three waves uh, they they take longer to play out. Uh, if you even measure, let's say, the length of time of the three wave that it, that we're in right now. Uh, so, so far, this has been going on for 161 days versus uh, the one wave that measured out for 119 days. So you can see even every sub cycle is getting longer. longer. And th this is all. Yeah, they get they get longer because it, it takes more energy to push up like the prices. Uh, but when you have when it plays out over a longer period of so time, you can actually see higher percentage gains. So, Maddie, can we take the? Uh, can you give me the exact day length on the length of time from subcycle one to subcycle two? Uh, yeah, and let's actually pull. just give give me the number of days. And I'm gonna try to calculate because we have day percent gain. We can just fill in the blank for day percent gain on the second one mm. and project how high we're gonna go. Sure. All right. So sub sub cycle one took 119 days. Okay. And then do you do you want the corrective waves too? Like the two waves. Um, mm, let's get the overall cycle length of time and the and the top mm. gain percentage. Okay, so the the first cycle took uh, 126 days, and the top gain percentage is. Uh, top gain percentage is a uh, 9600 percent. Um, I think it's actually slightly higher than that, but this is the the Uniswap uh, vision chart, so it might be okay. truncating some of the some of the data. But let's just say ten. You have basically ninety six hundred <laughs> to ten thousand percent for sub cycle one. We'll take a handicap. Yep. And then, do we have a day length on the next one, or is that not because it's not completed yet? We don't. It, yeah, we don't. We don't actually ha have the a completed time frame yet. But so far, uh, sub cycle three. So the three wave is now 174 days in. Okay. So let's see. I mean, you guys can talk while I do this. <laughs> yeah. It might take, and, take a minute. Well, well, while he calculates it, I'll uh, I'll show what I had done for the nights. Wasabi, that'll be a nice uh, filler sure. for coffee to crunch the numbers. That sounds so, good. Let me let me actually give you the we're we're gonna give you the screen on that. So I'm gonna temporarily remove everybody off the stream for a sec well, i mean i'm just gonna share it so all right guys so as you guys know you're now <laughs> it's that dcc <laughs> hello it's a whole new <laughs> what's up it's bud? A whole new place to take your coins come on to my magical rug and love with me uh, what's up bro how's vegas are you you're in vegas right now right yeah, what's bragging? Nice, nice. Are you on the yeah. phone? Yeah, I'm on the phone right now. That's but you nice know, but, but actually, what I'm actually am, I'm floating on top of my magical carpet right now. Yeah, yeah. That's what's it's going on. It, it's because you're levitating with those hex bags underneath you. Right, right. So, it's, so like, here's you. And Molly's gonna come on the thing, and we're gonna be. It's gonna be like, it's a whole new rug, a brand <laughs> new coin on Pulse Chain. Come give me all your hex, please. I love. <laughs> well, well, it's funny you say that because I was actually just revealing the artwork I had done for the for the knights. Even oh, though you, no. even yes. though actually, you actually, don't, even I though match. you don't like yours. <laughs> well, I can. Well, I, I can carry all your fat asses on this magical carpet ride. That <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go. All right, can you uh, can you see it? Uh, do you see? Can you see it or can you hear me? Uh, I don't even know if you can hear me. Wait, can you hear me, bro? All right, I don't know if you can hear me. God, oh yeah, you're you're I, good. Oh. I'm just I'm just trying to give you the the full screen so God. that uh, 
<laughs> I'm like trying to get any confirmation and no one's responded. I'm the carpet and I'm literally not the one rugging. Yeah, right? Okay, all right. All right, all right. All right. It's ready now. All right. all right. You can see it? Yes, I can see it. All right, it. cool. All right, I want to hurry up all and right. get off my picture, so that would be great. Uh, okay. <laughs> so... Uh, Hexican in the community uh, community made this. Uh, his name is Matt on Twitter. He goes by Dij Satoshi. Really talented guy. Uh, he made he made some funny night pictures. It started with Richard, and then he made one of me, and then I asked him if he could go ahead and do the rest of the Hexicans. I offered to commission him to do it. He refused for me to pay him, so you guys should definitely go give him a follow on Twitter. I'll post this link here in a little bit, but really creative and he made it he made one for each one of the nights so pretty funny and uh yeah it, they're really cool so he did me uh this is my alter ego fomo motley so <laughs> look, looking majestic good. With, with my uh with my frills and my uh quattro cinco pendant over here what the spurs <laughs> you look good with frills it, bro thanks man thanks might bring it back <laughs> <laughs> then we got our, then we got our boy, <laughs> the merchant of a thousand coins, looking like Genghis Khan over here. <laughs> Dollar Khan. He's holding all those bags and in, in, under that, under that uh, cloak, Bro, under that these, are, these are all, these are all actual. These are actually. <laughs> he wanted, he wanted a real life rest, representation of his coins, so he actually got him placed on his, on his robes. So yeah, this is uh this is a merchant of a thousand coins, Moses. He's a uh, he's a he's a wheeler, dealer of shit coins, and he's here to conquer the crypto space. <laughs> you made <laughs> he me a little camel <laughs> <laughs> DC's a little a little shy. He thinks he looks a little husky in this one, but it's it's just the rubs, guys. He's he's full he's yeah. full Chad under here. Under full that, under that robe, he's fully jacked. <laughs> <laughs> jacked those, cab, those calves are huge from all those bags he's carrying. <laughs> then we got our young majestic. Count Coffee, getting ready to go to the battle. Best name. Thank, the you, best name. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Count Coffee. Count the Coffee. Lord, Lord leading, of my kingdom. Leading the way with the Scalibur, looking looking ready for battle. Then, be okay. <laughs> yeah. then we got then we got our boy, fucking hey, down, Brent. The, you what? You can't see, you can't it? see it. Oh scroll shit! Down. Oh shit! We mean can't see it. That's oh, not um, the center right. screen. Your screen might be frozen. Hold we can on. see three photos. We see you, oh, a dollar cost, and then hold on. Right, my, th my thing's not working. Hold on, hold on. Let's try okay. it. It's it's you, you gotta talk like my name is Count of Coffee. <laughs> then, we got, uh, coffee <laughs> then we got our boy Valiant Brand. Uh, scroll down otherwise down known as the you still can't see it. What the I can barely I, see. I, it. I, we can I see like half of it. Maybe maybe it. How about how about that? Uh, God dang it, this is awful. Frozen. Yeah, I don't know. Brand, it doesn't like your picture. Bro. Okay, okay. okay, okay. There we go, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's Every from the uh, that one uh, video of when Moses is part of the Red Sea. <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember, remember the one our Hexagame character, made? That, <laughs> that yeah. is true. Hexagame's been killed it with those videos. But yeah, this is uh, this is Bran, uh, Bran the Warhammer. Uh, <laughs> he looks very disgusted by something. I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> And then last, the oh, oh shit, oh shit, go back. Ah, oh, all right. And then we got our boy, uh, we got our boy Wasabi over here, the the czar of charts himself, <laughs> looking majestic. And then we got the, and then we got the full squad all all posted yeah. up over here, which was, uh, if you guys zoomed in earlier, uh, Wasabi had us the thumbnail, and I told his ass to take it down until, <laughs> until we could show everyone. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, shout out again to Matt uh, Dig Satoshi on Twitter. I will link him for everyone and uh, go show him some love. Subscribe. Um, I tried to pay him and he he refused to take my money, so uh, he did it for the community. Right. So we we really appreciate that stuff. I have such a good joke, but nah, it's too easy. I'm not gonna do it. Do it. No. Do it. Just, you, no, are, no, no. you are you are the magical it. carpet. All right. I will rug, rug you guys once Rug again. us. Okay. Rug us. <laughs> you know, it, I had to ask. I asked a lot of other females in the hex space and stuff why they call Bran the Warhammer. And there you go. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, there's the only one way to find out, way. ladies. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call him the War. Like, I told him. Give but, me a word to explain what brand is to you, Warhammer. That's all I got is a response. Yeah. They're they're gonna have to get through his Venezuelan girlfriend though, so that could be uh that could be a rough battle. They are pretty for them. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he's the muscle, if you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, no, that was really cool that he did that, and I'll make sure to link him in the chat for you guys so you can go follow him. <laughs> he did a really great job. 
Yeah, he did. He, yeah, that yeah, was I, good. Know, I know they take a lot of time, so I really appreciate him doing all that work. Maddie, sorry, we'll get one for you too. We'll try to get one. For yeah, you. we'll get one for you, <laughs> Hey, I'm already night. on a Pokemon card. I don't know. If you <laughs> That's pretty it. badass. No, let's but, let's see it. Oh, cool. Yeah. But, yeah, but was oh, yeah. it but was it the thick version? Were you a thick Pokemon or were you just a regular <laughs> regular Pokemon? Oh, you'll have to see. It's, it's a picture's <laughs> worth I've, a thousand words. You know? I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm I'm glad you weren't a thick Pokemon. Just saying, just throwing it out there. So so the uh, hex raccoon or whatever it is, you know, like had created a Twitter poll and had said basically, I think they thought that they were gonna win. And they put me as one of the options for who should be the next hex mascot. And I, I won and I don't want to be the hex mascot or like, you know, I was like so honored or something. And so I agreed to be the hex mascot for a day or a week or something. And I created a competition. Somebody could win a whole t-share if they made an image of me as the, uh, uh, as the character that I wanted to be as the mascot, which was a cross between a Ninja Turtle, a dolphin, and a Pokemon card. And so Abit made the card for like me. A, like a special Blastoise, essentially. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you did a great job, man. That's cool. Special how? Wait, did you, did you share? <laughs> you know, special. <laughs> there's a, there's no, no, there's really no share screen, I don't think. Yeah, there's no share screen. Oh, wait, oh, Matt, were you trying to? Here we go. <clears throat> Be a second, but yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna add. Uh, so the uh, this Twitter, so the the creator of the 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 artwork, <clears throat> and just that the the awesome uh, the awesome idea. So I'm gonna put that in the description of the video so that everybody can can access yeah. it. Um, just give give me a couple minutes, and you'll you'll see his, you'll have a direct link to his Twitter. Is that the Digibyte like... guy that makes the the hex memes and stuff? What's that? Is that the Digi Digi Satoshi guy? Is he like the Digibyte dude? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Oh, never mind. Oh, that's, oh, cool. that's cool. Oh, I've seen that yeah. before. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it used to be on his, uh, on his old intro to his uh, videos. Yeah. yeah. No weakness? Wow. Retreat you, cost I, hex. <laughs> pa passion for hex, 369 attack damage. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call him basic, though, man. That's kind of rude. Oh. It should have made yeah, you like. Uh... Could have made you final form at least. Gosh. <laughs> well, I guess it's because he's just he's just at dolphin level. He hasn't upgraded to shark or whale or Poseidon yet. So you know. Yeah, true. He, he's, true. he's 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 a base starter set. Are you want a cowboy hat? <laughs> yeah, I was making fun of Bitcoiners that day. Oh yeah. right, right. Like uh, like. Uh, What's Jimmy that guy's Song? name? Yeah, Jimmy Song. Yeehaw, yeah. bro. Yeah, well, I used to like Jimmy Song, and then I realized he's all right. Yeah, yeah. I met him. Kind of weird. But all those, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to talk shit. I, mean, guess, I mean, I we'll, guess we'll we're kind of, I guess we're kind of weird at this point. <laughs> yeah, true, true, yeah. true. Do you, do you guys remember that time we were in the green room and we were trying to see what kind of Pokemon we were? I can't believe we did that. That was a lot. What Pokemon were we? I don't. I don't. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I don't remember my. I remember brands. Didn't we? Uh, didn't we get brand like the koala one or whatever? Was it? <laughs> yeah. Or, we're, or we're, was that? Or was that wasabi? I can't. Uh, remember. We gave, we we gave one of them like that. Then, then we went the serious. koala. <laughs> and then we went way too much time into to, into a serious Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, we probably spent an hour on that. It's so bad. <laughs> Such a waste of time. We're like, you know what? It's you know sleep. what? You know what? Didn't you when you said, you know what, Miguel? You know who you are, Mr. Mime. That's who you are, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mime. Who I, don't even, who? I don't even remember. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. Did I do that? All right. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. Uh, hmm. I make fun of pick corners every day. Uh, yeah, they're too easy, man. Uh, they're, they're like coping so hard. <laughs> I liked uh, yeah. I liked Lemon Ortega's idea for the hex mascot. It should be a honey badger. I definitely concur yeah, with that. Like, yeah. They don't give Ooh. a don't give Wait, a what, fuck. What's a big Wasabi versus Molly in a hockey match. Who in a would win though? I oh, got Wasabi I all day. All day. I can't. I can't, I can't ice skate anything. worth a shit. Uh, I, think, I think we assume because you're from the East Coast or something that oh it must you guys all must. Uh, <laughs> It's yeah. from Florida. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though Florida ironically has an, a lot of uh, hockey teams for some reason, but Interesting. not, not my school. Yeah. yeah, I need I need to take wasabi when there's not ice skates strapped to my feet. Otherwise, I'm getting <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Hardcore. I think I, I can't remember who I called a weedle. 
Lamont, Lamont said uh, that. That's that, insulting uh, as hell. <laughs> Dude, DC, said, uh, like, Lamont, yeah, Lamont, like, Lamont guys... said he reminds me of Gengar. You look like a Gengar. Gengar right? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, Gasly's uh, third evolution or whatever? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. yeah, Gengar, yeah. Wait, guys! Start start throwing the Pokemon you think everyone on screen looks like. Let's let's see what the let's see what the community <laughs> consensus. Crowdsource it. <laughs> yeah, crowd crowdsource what you think everyone's Pokemon should be. I'm I'm so out of date with my Pokemon these days. Anyway, it's like all the new ones. I have no fucking clue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I remember we were trolling each other in the green room, and I was like, and I was like, you know what, man? You know, if, if I'm being real honest about what Pokemon I really am, I'm probably that giant Dragonite in the couple first episodes. You remember that giant Dragonite? Giant yeah. Dragonite? Like Team like Rocket's above, like blasting it. Above it average it Dragonite? Rockets. Yeah, that huge <laughs> yeah. ass Dragonite. You were like, no that way, shit. bro. You are not a giant Dragonite. <laughs> I don't remember that. God damn, I miss Look at the grip of the Weedle. Damn. That's cold, bro. That's up. so cold. <laughs> yeah. Someone banned him. He's a bee drill, man. He's a bee drill. <laughs> yeah. Machamp. Motley's Machamp. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thick, uh, I'm thick Pikachu. You're thick, thick Pikachu. Pikachu. I mean, you got a thick Pikachu. You are thick. That's for sure. Oh, he's sensitive about that. Stop. It's the rogue. Oh, I was joking. <laughs> Brad is a war turtle. turtle. Nice. <laughs> Maybe one day Brad he'll is, be a Blastoise. <laughs> Brad is way too nice to be a war turtle. You guys are not doing a good job at this. I, 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 think, there's a, I think there's a huge like, size. Brad's a Dratini. <laughs> Wasabi storyline. I don't even. I don't even understand where you guys are going. Brand is Dragonite. Brand is Dragonite. Wasabi is a Snorlax. You know. You know. What I think Maddie is. Maddie is that legendary like Thunder Dog Pokemon from the second Pokemon game. Right? Oh. Silver. You know. Raikou? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The Raikou, I Raikou, forgot the or? name. Raikou. 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 It's because it's because he has that hair and stuff and everything. It actually yeah. matches up pretty well. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. it's kind of got like curls or whatever. I bet he's yeah, quick too. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the I bet. I bet. There, the I bet. There, I bet. There's, <laughs> I, I bet. There's a Pokemon that has hair closer to Maddie's than Raikou. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm on a search. Feel free wow, to talk about crypto I, I was guys. Giving him a, I'm giving Maddie a, a like legendary Pokemon, and you guys are like, nah. Yeah, the one I'm gonna find is probably not as good as Raikou. That is for sure. Sorry, Maddie. Sweetcoon. <laughs> there's Sweetcoon and uh, Entei. What was the other one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sick, yeah, dude. I got Ra Raikou is always Fuck my yeah. favorite. Thanks, bro. Fact. Zapdos, yeah. Zapdos, Zapdos is awesome. I got the Zapdos coolest one. Was my favorite. <laughs> Fuck you yeah, guys. <laughs> that was my favorite bird for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was always a Zapdos fan. Let's see. <laughs> you could be a Tangela. <laughs> oh, Matt, Matt, yeah, Mr. Mime. <laughs> Brand got Arcanine. That's cool. Wasabi Firo. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I literally, I, I literally just typed. Spiro's Spiro's evolution. It's like the retarded Pidgey uh, evolution. Oh yeah. By the way, guys, oh, um, we did we did do a little moon math in the private chat, and uh, if if this follows the same trajectory, meaning like if the ratio of days to percent gains of the last cycle equals the same ratio of gains to percent days from this cycle, and mind you, we're oh, not even man. done with the cycle yet. Mind you, we're like we we're only 174 days in. It could last longer. That puts us easily at a 13,248 percent gain, which according to our boy Wasabi says that's about 25 to 30 cents that we're looking at for the next cycle. So that's just a target based on history repeating itself, which it usually does. Not financial advice, but pretty cool. Yeah. Strap those FOMO pants on. Shoo! Let's actually give the, <laughs> the audience a, a visual with that looks Yeah, like yeah, yeah. That sounds better. Mm -hmm. The and silver chart? <laughs> yeah, right. not not the golden chart. That's for sure. They didn't earn it last time. But thanks again, thanks thanks again for the thousand subs for Wasabi. That was awesome. Just a little late. Just a little late. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you guys. So if you do a uh, a measured move here, <clears throat> and then if you're looking between a uh, if you're looking at the thirteen thousand two hundred plus percent gain, um, I'm. God, that candle just looks I, unreal right now. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're you're basically looking at you're you're just looking in the sky, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't look yeah. up high enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, this, wow. is, this is a this is an insane move, guys. Like this is this is where it goes back. I mean, there's literally, uh, literally this wick here. Let's actually zoom into this wick. Literally, literally. Let's. So Let's do it. Those that sold this wick. <laughs> Fucking play. play. <laughs> Imagine doing that. <laughs> Yeah, that's not. I a know good someone move. that did. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. They were holding liquid the whole time. Oh, out, yeah. out, oust them right now, Brad. Yeah, do it live right now. Oust, oust their right out. <laughs> <laughs> Dox Dox too much, I know. <laughs> the, the insane part is if you if you actually even measure it to the current price, it's now up thirty three x versus the current price. But that doesn't even include the big payday bonus, which is a multiplier for, for holders. So basically take this this number you see here and multiply it by basically two for, for long-term holders. And they're they're basically up 64, uh, 65X since the, since the big payday. So it goes to the whole mentality that holding, you, you're not going to be the holder. You're just nope. not. It's so not possible. Are, are you going to make a... When, when do you ever make... Uh, like a 64. Uh, let's see. Let's see the time delta on that, right? Because that's the other important aspect is from that from that bottom after big payday even to the current. Uh, actually, yeah, we have it right here. 174 days. That's not even one year. I mean, just think about it. I mean, that's that's why you, it, it's this mentality where um, had you just staked your coins and not sold, you'd be up 65x since that event. So. Mm. Um, Dude, Wasabi, Wasabi, you could talk a like chick out of out of a wedding day, bro. That with that chart right now, that's incredible, <laughs> man. <laughs> that's the beautiful thing like, about that, chart that, that Wasabi yeah. mentions is um, w when you're staking, you kind of save yourself from yourself, and and when you're holding something liquid like that, and you see high, high volatility, it's easy for people to fall into their emotions or fun and stuff like that, and kind of just sell, but. When you're earning a, a killer interest and especially for that day specifically the big payday is like 30 to like 90 percent um, just just for the people that were staking so add that on top of the gains and it's like you know 1500 something x that some people are in yeah 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 the, close to 2000 x right now if yeah. you start including <clears throat> interest actually let's let's even, let's even let's even compare a relative because uh another really good chart to look at is it's total two, which which is the the total. It's the crypto market cap excluding Bitcoin, and total two isn't even at that percentage since basically the the COVID um, the COVID sell off. Total total two is basically around a twenty seven x. Um, but that but that measures that measures all the way back to March of twenty twenty. So if if you're if you're actually going by that the the time frame of these movements is happening faster, and the and it's outperforming um, what's what's basically considered the golden metric in this entire market, which is the total two chart, uh, which which is kind of an aggregation of the the altcoin performance, and it's it's outperforming that as a big cap, which is which is so hard to do. Um, so it just it, the the data the data is there. It's it's um, it's expanding faster. Uh, and the game, the percentage gains are, are higher than um, than than uh, investments that people have to make into more. Basically, people making investments into very speculative plays are underperforming hex, and that's if they're actually getting those uh -huh. plays correctly. So you, so you have to put that in perspective, because uh, generally big caps, which hex is a big cap, it's in the top ten. Uh, generally, the big caps do not pump as hard as the the mid to to low caps. But it's pumping harder. It's just yeah, but based, none of the big caps the have have the the supply dynamics that we do. Like we literally yeah. just hacked the market cap. Yeah. Like let's let's be honest, we we totally hacked mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's a different dynamic that you're you're getting more eyeballs on because of the market cap. But yeah. I mean, the lim the actual supply out there is so low, and that's the key to right. this whole thing. And we're not trying to beat around the bush on that. We all know this, right? So like that's it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but haters hate that the most. I think. I agree with looking to crypto. I know a lot of people, um, well, not a lot, but I, I know a couple of people that right now are, yeah, going into the, the low caps and kind of just almost like 2017, you know, just throwing a dart at the board, like with your eyes closed and just seeing if it, if it hits. Just, and uh, just, just call me out. You just call me out in public, bro. Just call me out now. Just say my <laughs> name. It's someone else. It's someone else. But, you know, I guess if it applies, then it applies. 
But the point is, is you know, 2020 is the top performing asset and watch it do the same thing in 2021. <laughs> like I said, that's just before interest. So when you have something that is uh, not prone to, to getting like rug pulled and no admin keys and stuff like this, like these are the things that people really aren't considering uh, in crypto when they're getting into these projects. And, you know, how many times has Richard updated that list where it's like hack or rug pull and stuff like this. So mm -hmm. just something to be uh, mindful of. If it's something like Hex, which is more established and bigger market cap and still has the gains, then why would you want to go into something more risky, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. And it, if we actually, I was Motley's about to, I think it was Motley. What's I that? I got a question. I didn't, I didn't, oh, I didn't Matt, say Matty, oh, so, sorry, so ahead, to, so to follow up on that, so we saw, we saw 2,000 new wallets come into Hex in the past week, and that actually represents about 1% of the total wallets that are out there. Yeah. Um, but we also see a lot of our numbers jumping up with live streams and with tweets for sure and everything. People are a lot more engaged is what we're seeing, but we're also seeing new names pop up in the chats and that sort of thing. And so um, my question is, do we think aside from that, right? Because we're, we're going up 20% a day for the past, like, I don't know, eight or 10 days. So do we think that it's more likely that the OA is buying or that ex centralized exchanges are buying? Neither. Um, I'm not neither? sure I understand the question. Like, I, don't I think, think it's people buying. I think it's people buying. Might be a false buying. Do you think it's... So it, it's Real it's new, it's new people and it's and it's old hexagons mm -hmm. like so today right this this shit kind of actually blew my mind so for you guys that don't know i'm still currently in the navy and i'm finishing out at my short command as a recruiter so i was in one of my high schools and i was talking to some of the kids and uh i mentioned that i was investing in cryptocurrencies along with other things and this one kid was really interested because he'd been investing in cryptocurrencies as well so like we started talking i was just like you know what's in your portfolio and and then i was talking about some of my stuff and of course i'm going to mention hex and I, I mentioned hex he's like oh he's like you got hex i was just like yeah i was like i was like you know you know about hex he's like yeah he's like i know about hex i was like i was like you fucking with me like you just like you know how like kids try to act cool shit like yeah i know about that yeah. mm -hmm. no he yeah. uh he had a discord group and they were there one of his groups they were all just talking about and it was just hex they were talking about hex and what it had been doing over the past couple of days i was wow. like that is freaking awesome. Wow. Like when, yeah, like That's when cool. the high school kids start talking about it, something other wow. than like fucking Doge and shit. I was just so like, the word gets That's out. That's pretty awesome. That yeah. makes you realize that it's not just the OGs yeah. buying more. Like, yeah, we we're already great. pretty much in. The price chart is the mm -hmm. best advertising of all time, and and you can't yep. help but talk That's about it. it. I mean, uh, yeah. Maddie, to your point, I don't know if um, exchanges are buying. If, if they were to be buying, it'd be because they plan on listing, probably, which would be great. But that's a bullish rumor that I, don't, I cannot confirm or deny. Um, what was the I'm other? It, but yeah, <laughs> it was exchanges so, so, I mean, or OA. Was, yeah, I mean, uh... one. So, so we've got a few different situations, like possibly the OA is making a move, possibly exchanges are making a move, or these are real people, but only one percent more addresses leads to hex like doubling or quadrupling. Well, right? there's no here's what I want to say about the data point though. Here's what yes. I want to say about the data point of the the total addresses though. It's a little bit skewed because there were people. It wasn't the OA, but it was random people that actually airdropped like, or they sent out a hundred hacks to like any wallet holder that held over more than like a certain amount of Ethereum in that very early days. Oh, yeah. And that got our total number of wallet addresses up by about a hundred thousand. So really what I like to look at is the number of stakers. To me, that represents more of the real users. And at least that's the kind of real users that we want. Those are the type of real people that we want in the system, right? Not so traders. I, I like to look at stakers and we've, and we've got 30,000, which is up, uh, you know, 2000 from 2800 a couple like last month and that's a huge gain you know but to me but oh. to even count even to counter that point though um with a lot of these new users that are they're coming in with a lot smaller bags of hex right so like a lot of them are staying liquid in anticipation for for this um pulse chain drop too so that that's something to consider as well during this time period some of them might not be staking just for this uh just for this pulse play or at least do a little bit of the sacrifice phase and then stake afterwards. I think we'll see the staking bump up a little bit after uh, after some period of the sacrifice phase goes through. Because I know after I get my my amount of pulse that I'm happy with, I'll be staking the rest for uh, the snapshot. So mm. so six percent or ten percent more users is is resulting in a quadrupling of the price. I think that that proves what everybody's been saying all along 
about how rare Hex is. Mm. And uh, it hasn't caught up. Like, the, you know, the price doesn't reflect that yet. And I, th I think it will as the price continues to shoot up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's Amazing. the best advertisement. Yeah. Is this price going up yeah. all the time? I mean, this is something I've, t I've told Richard and I've told people in the, in the in the background that if we just had like a, I mean, obviously we like these parabolic moves, but like if we had like a little more, um, especially during like a couple months ago and stuff, we just had a little more consistently green on the way up and stuff because because it's as it's, it's crazy as it is, like people just love like they like every single day, you know, they check like, Buy oh, look, I'm up. I'm up a little yep. bit. I'm up a little bit more, a little bit more. Then it makes them want to like FOMO in more. This is what I saw with the Celsius crowd where it was just a slow right. little steady grind up and people loved it. loved it, loved it. Like it's so true though, but like, it is. Now, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, dude, dude, we're all like addicted to checking our staker apps. It's <laughs> endorphins. That's what the buy, that, but that's it's what the buybacks really do. The, <laughs> the buybacks stabilize the price so you never have a down day that's more than like one or 2% in, in Celsius. Whereas like in Hex, you'll have these negative 15% days, but it'll be made up for by like a positive 50% exactly. week, you know? So it's like, people really don't like that that gut feeling of the loss, but that's what it takes to actually succeed in hacks. You need to be right. able to withstand that volatility. But, but yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree with you. Buy the dip. A, steady, a steady drip of that hopium is always good. And it teaches you, <laughs> yeah, it teaches you to buy that dip because the, there's so many dip buying opportunities that you don't get in these mm -hmm. more stable coins. Mm -hmm. Could have bought Hex at 1.3 cents, not even like two weeks ago. Yeah. I did, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I did, I too. Yeah. <laughs> I did, too. How much you buy? <laughs> uh, One million? One million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, the, the thing, and, and in terms of the, the chart dynamics, because every, every coin is different. Every coin has their own market structure, at least if we're comparing coins that, have, that are going to stand, like, the test of time um, through their price movements. So, for example... If you look at uh, Ethereum, and let's pull up the, the price chart on that, because the, the movements on ETH's first cycle resemble what uh, Hex is doing now on the on the price charts, where <clears throat> it has these uh, long consolidation periods and these explosive moves up. So if you look at ETH to USD on the Poloniex chart during uh, its first cycle, you can see that the movements are much faster and we've we've shown this through previous streams there's there's uh there's likely videos on this on uh twitter and youtube but the movements on eth during its first cycle were basically explosive straight up um over the grand over the, the trajectory of it you could basically just have like a trend line that's drawn but the vast majority of the time like even if you just look at uh let's say the the area like you could see there's more there's more time spent consolidating and building up uh, before you see the next price movement, but it would explode up. And then even uh, very similarly leading up to the blow off top in, in early uh, January of 2018. So the price movements are, are very similar. And, and I'm sure you're, you're probably going to see that on Ethereum at some point this cycle. I mean, I know it's been good over the last year or so, but that's because the, the cycle itself is getting longer. But even before this this entire price movement, there was this huge bear market here where the price did nothing for basically two and a half years. And even a lot along along the ride now up to its current price movement, there was people that were uh, underwater from the previous cycle, so basically buying into the this previous bear market that are now up on their investment. And that just kind of goes into the whole you know dollar cost average approach. But the advantage is if you're if you're buying while you're still in the first market cycle, um, mm -hmm. so if you look at the ETH to USD chart around here, this is the green circle you see here is basically where Hex was for um, basically close to a year. And this is actually the same, very similar length in time that Ethereum did before it had its explosive three wave. And uh, again, if you compare the, the bear market price of Ethereum versus its uh, versus the price of its of a peak even the peak of its one wave uh the price was still 5x higher so yeah. it, it it's 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 all you know the <laughs> earlier you get in obviously you have you're you're shielded from a lot of that um that kind of that uh you you get to a point where you're so you're so far um you're so far you're so early i should say on the price chart that it, it doesn't even matter what the, the market bear. does yeah yeah 
that's that's the amazing part and, and that's just that's just assuming that hex acts like everything else in the bear market too again just like what dc was talking about earlier it's like that chart that that price going up it's it's really important so imagine imagine we get to the bear market and hex has that only only green candle in the bear market just going straight up like it's going to be i want to put my assets where i get 40 percent. i don't know about everyone else in the market but once you get once you get a little wave going, it, it's just gonna snowball. It's gonna go from a little snowball mm -hmm. to a damn avalanche of everyone just bringing their funds to hex during a bear market. Like we truly could see something different than what we've ever seen in a bear market before, where everyone else mm -hmm. is just pure death. Yeah. What's up, yep. Kareem? How you doing, man? What's up, Kareem? Yeah. <clears throat> Kareem. Good to see you here. Yeah. So in the bear market, I would love if like that's when the 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 basically the treasury because we all know there's a mysterious individual that's got a big bag of ETH. I would love to see that some of that money get deployed in terms of marketing dollars during the bear market. It, it would just be, it seems like the obvious solution. Mm -hmm. That's when you actually need marketing. Right now we've got the price chart to do the marketing for us, right? And all of right, us, yeah. obviously. And, uh, but you know, when, when times are, are tough, I guess, which, you know, there will be mm -hmm. a time, um, that's when you throw money at it, like real money. And, and it's like, right. imagine just TV ads, you know, just everywhere you look, hex billboards, <laughs> Times Square. Just I was about to say, who yeah. watches TV anymore? <laughs> old people with money. Uh, yeah, <laughs> true. We'll old people yeah. with a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna be like calling in. How do I purchase that hex? <laughs> the late night at four a.m. <laughs> we have one eight hundred for hex for three easy installments. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. So so, yeah. so in terms in terms of the the price movement we're in now, uh, hex is hex is in is in its three wave. So. Uh, we were just looking at the comparison on the ETH chart. So there's that huge Shee! consolidation range, and then that explosive, explosive move up that we're um, seeing on the price charts. That still has, in, in my opinion, ways to go before you even hit the next uh, local top. Do we have an exact dollar value of, of how early we are compared to ETH? Uh, I think so. There was the the moon math that uh, Crypto Coffee just did. A, he just did a calculation as far as the length of time. I don't know if, it, if there's, there might be new people. I don't know. We could actually revisit that that moon math. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it was really quick calculation, like back of the napkin. But um, 126 days, we went up almost 10,000 percent. That's a ratio of about 38 uh, percent. You know, 1.318. Uh, if you divide the two, and then you take that for the current day length. Now that we're we are into our new cycle, which is 174 days approximately, times one point or yeah, times 1.38 gives us a gain of 13,248 mm. percent, which. Again, we're not even completely through the cycle. It's likely that the cycle is going to last longer because cycles lengthen because of the way time works and shit. But if you go up, you know <laughs> that that much percentage, that puts us at I think twenty five to thirty cents, according to you looking at crypto. So, yeah, um, I, I we can show it if we want to. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's so really, really can... oversimplifying. We're oversimplifying. So if we were to back project that, that would mean that we're at thirty one dollar ETH. Maybe. Good good question. Maddie, you're asking all the right questions. I like this. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that is the right question. Yeah, th this is the this is the current move. So that that uh over thirteen hundred um or sorry, thirteen thousand percent uh that uh crypto coffee's mentioning currently playing out on the price charts. So there's still um there's still ways to go before uh, we see basically the the peak of this, this current impulsive wave, and then if we and if we go back to the ETH to USD chart, uh, you can see basically it was this entire move here, and and thirty three dollars on the the ETH chart. Yeah, that actually looks pretty pretty reasonable, uh, Maddie. So around basically around uh, this level here on the ETH to USD price chart. So you can see there was. This move here up to around 33, uh, 32, 33 dollars. And that's, and then, god damn it. <laughs> you have disturbed the chart master. How dare you? <laughs> uh, Banish him. <laughs> uh, now he doesn't even know where he's at. God yeah. damn it. You have to you have to you have to leave this temple right now. <laughs> the Zar of charts has spoken. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, look how much cushion you have still too before you even get to the, the price floor during the bear market too. Yeah. 
It's actually almost like a good ways to go. Because from that from that level, uh, Maddie was mentioning, basically that's another two and a half x to the ETH price floor. From that thirty, you know, thirty three, thirty four dollars, because ETH bottomed out around eighty dollars during the bear market. But I mean, those lows are are often. I mean, it's usually very short lived, as right. you saw on the price chart. I mean, this this was only a few weekly candles, and then uh, there was just that one wick during the COVID sell off. But wicks generally, you don't you don't really uh, wicks. They're not it, all that matters is where the candle closes. So. Uh, yes. Even even during that huge sell-off, it never truly closed at that price level, other than that one instance uh, during so my, the bear market. My my price floor of seven to ten cents that might actually be way low. Mm. Two yeah, and a half from here is fifteen point <clears throat> seven five cents. Yeah, mm. yeah I know whales still, only. Yeah, has a prediction of ten dollars by the end of the year. And uh, in that. Gunther. I mean, yeah, he does a better job of like, you know, calculating the map on, on why. And then Gunther was talking about how Bitcoin went from like a, a penny to, to $30 uh, way back when too. And yeah, when you have the minimum viable liquidity and just all these other things that are causing uh, positive price pressure. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that are still trying to get in like fresh capital that might even have like holds on Coinbase or, you know, other assets that are pending that are just waiting to hit fiat and then go into crypto so that's a uh, pretty bullish as well i think we get a richard hart interview tomorrow and i think he releases nice. sacrifice phase on saturday i think we yeah. get a 10 cents on saturday and all chaos just breaks loose that's my prediction oh god, yeah. oh, god. <laughs> i've got a question where did maddie where, maddie where did you and motley get your identical matching <laughs> necklaces from <laughs> shapeways like was that a quarter like one of those quarter machines that you just what, what is right. Shapeways? How, how do you go? Uh, Shapeways.com. Shapeways. 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 Uh, it's where Brand got his as well. They have two different oh. styles. They have the skeleton one, oh, and then they nice. actually have that one like that. I've got that one too, and then it was actually Motley that turned me on to like the Embrose logo, which is this one that's a little bit bigger, and it's like, damn, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah, and yeah. <clears throat> actually, even even for some more uh, chart porn. If we if we look at the stop it, bro! I'm becoming an addict. Let me hit you with another genre of chart porn, yeah. real quick. Huh? Unreal. It, it, it just it just shows that because um, this was something, this is something that was uh, this was like an interesting thought after big payday, and this is something I was actually uh, speculating on at the time was the even the major pairings like hex to Bitcoin, for example, uh, to me. Even this accumulation range to me didn't, it, it, it wasn't, the game basically evolved versus what previously existed going into the whole adoption amplifier phase because you had whales that could uh, introduce a lot of supply into the market. Um, and you, you saw that, like you basically saw the, the peak uh, during the, the pre big payday, but now you could see the price is basically blasting above it and it kind of goes to the whole, kind of the whole market cap kind of hacks thing that uh there's there's these supply sinks that exist with the with the t-shares so uh for example let's say let's let's say let's first start off with like an inflationary currency like the dollar um <laughs> where you have an infinite supply so that ends up pushing up the prices of of assets you see it with real estate you obviously see it with cryptocurrency so built in <laughs> mathematically uh on hex is you, you have a supply sink with the t-shares and cryptocurrency the reason why you have these really big price movements is because there's a there's a hoarding and speculation with with every cryptocurrency so bitcoin massive amounts of supply hoarding same thing with ethereum and then there's certain incentives that basically drive uh supply hoarding so in the case for the t-shares because that ultimately determines what your rewards are going to be in terms of your hex payout per day there's there's the whole dynamic of um if you, even somebody let's say that sells their monthly interest, theoretically, it's not even theory, they mathematically can no longer have the same amount of T-shares they had previously. So there, there's all these, um, there's Unless all they want to leverage their time. They yeah. can go out what, further. One quick thing to say about T-shares, you know, it's really, really crazy that we're about to experience is literally we talked about this last year. We talked about this for months. We're going to have to start talking about B-shares now. It's yes. going to officially become, yeah. people can no longer easily afford a T-share. So it's expensive. Wow. Yeah, how much that, is the what's what's the USD price right now? A thousand dollars, eleven hundred. Yeah, a thousand bucks. Yeah, thousand eighty somewhere around there. Mm. 
So I mean, as, as we talked about, economic. yeah, one T share is going to go over a price of a Bitcoin. I mean, right now it's at what, like a quarter of an Ethereum, something like that. Like, it, and it went from like sixty cents at the all time low in twenty twenty, yeah. and that's just the bullish thing to see. Is not only do you have the spot price of hex per, per you know versus the dollar, but then then the share price, and then yeah. you've got the ratcheting of that, and it's just bullish all around. I, I do have a recommendation, though. Like, even though we are so used to saying T shares, you, mm -hmm. you guys know what unit bias is. Everybody does. You should all know what unit bias is. And if we want to onboard new people, we have to change the way we talk about it. We, we need to start saying D shares because it's going to be pretty lame if someone comes in and saying, Oh, I can't even buy a whole T share. You know, mm -hmm. well, what's the point? <laughs> but no, no, B shares are also amazing. Like everything is awesome. But yeah, I mean, it, it, so it also framing. goes with the op opsec too, as well. You don't want to start going out like, yeah, I got thousands and thousands of T shares. Like it's not a good look, right? When yeah, look at look at where we're at the price chart right now. You actually have some yeah. stupid, stupid crypto gains, and pe you become a target at that point. So you got to be yeah, you, you got to be careful. <clears throat> I actually right. started writing like a blog post that uh, is talking about how I, I agree with what other people are saying that we should switch from T shares to B shares. But I would also make one other recommendation to the community as um, something that, that we could help new people with is by talking about B 15 year B shares as the price of a B share instead of a one day price because nobody is really holding a thousand, nobody's putting a thousand dollars and staking it for only one day, but Shouldn't that's the price least. that we're quoting, <laughs> right? That's the yeah. price that we're quoting, unless they're trying to push up, push up the T-share price, which is actually not what new people need, right? And so, yeah. um, so the actual, so I've been tracking really the cost of a 15 year T-share for a while. And it's easy to know that it's just a third of whatever the, the price is listed on the website. But I think that Richard intentionally did it for one day because I remember suggesting that he do it longer. And I think the reason for that is to like not make it so easy for people. Like you have to do a little bit more research. So the advantage of having a one day T-share price as the one that's quoted is to make it so that people have to do more research to really find out that 15 years is the best type of stake. Or, yeah. Um, or you can even so, do 10 just for calculation purposes. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's good to point. always do that because then that way the little guy can max my, can just leverage their time for just coming in with a smaller, smaller bag. Yeah. And actually able to get those T shares at the, at the minimum cost essentially by just going out longer. Longer old. Kareem says, Kareem says we should just go to shares, <laughs> which I think would be pretty cool. It's much more cool to say, hey, I have a billion shares, right? Like, yeah, I'm a billion shareholder. Oh, there we go. $1,100 so right now. So it's like 33 cents for a 15 year B share if a T share is $1,000 in, in old terms, right? Because it's really mm -hmm. a 15 year T share if, if, it's, if the website's saying $1,000 is really $333. Yeah. So if we scale that back, then it's like 33 cents. Yep. Right. TechSex wants to know, is a B share going to be part of Pulse? Yeah, 1,000%. Well, not part of Pulse chain, but it'll be part of Hex on the Pulse Hex. network. Yeah, yeah it's, it's always going to be part of Hex. That's not going anywhere. Um, would, Pul Pulse is not going to have shares. No. What? Go ahead. You said, you said Pulse. Oh, Pulse, Pulse doesn't have shares. Yeah, you don't, yeah. you don't stake. I don't think you will be able to stake Pulse via like be a share a, mechanism. You're going to be able to do, uh, it's not going to be time lock staking. It's going to be like delegation of stakes uh, with the transaction fees. I, I know Richard was talking about that, but it's completely different than hex monetizing time. Just two different two different forms of staking. But um, yeah. So what do you guys think of that uh, switch to 15 years? For a t-shirt? For the price that gets quoted and that we talk about and that we onboard people with and that sort of thing. I mean, I think we we start off with the regular one day price and let them find out that hey, oh, there's bonuses, there's longer pays better, there's bigger pays better. If they get that galaxy brain moment, that's when it really clicks for them. So like, let's not yeah. spoon feed it too much. You're, I guess would be my my thing. You're taking that eureka moment away from them, and I can't tell you that's probably like the most rewarding part when you actually are able to explain hex well enough where you're onboardee gets that moment where like holy shit like it it just like fucking it clicks for them so yeah i 
I, I think it's worth that much more if they figure it out themselves where you can lead lead the horse to the water and not just like force it down their damn throat. You guys but, changed my mind about it and, and that's how Richard <laughs> designed it for a reason, right? Because it's yeah. a big difference yeah. to spoon feed somebody versus them finding out themselves and, and having that aha moment like you guys said. Yep. So and, and everyone's different too. Brain. Like we, we have we have older individuals in the community that don't necessarily want to go out that far. So you just have to let them figure out what what their optimal time is, regardless of leveraging yeah. their t-shirts. Maybe maybe 15 years is just not in their cards. Maybe they don't have a fa legacy or a family they're leaving behind, and they only want to do mm -hmm. eight years, seven years, five years. So you got to they have to be able to adapt it to to their strategy. That is the beautiful thing about hacks is is you do get to choose. You know, it's not like a a set number that you know it's not like one year, two year, three years. Like you get to choose. Oh. Maybe I want to do it on my birthday or anniversary, stuff like that. And like you mentioned, if if you're older, you know, getting closer to retirement or whatever, maybe maybe your stakes are, you know, more short than mm -hmm. they are on the long side. And those are kind of just like um, accumulating as you retire, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> and and what's gonna be what's gonna be nuts is the the emergency and stake penalties, the higher the price <laughs> goes, is gonna get to to True. just ridiculous valuations at some point. That's gonna be it's gonna be incredible because that that's gonna it's gonna be all that interest that uh some, and some price of appreciation that, oh yeah my God. and price appreciation on top of that if you if you don't know what if you don't know what uh, emergency end stakes are this is why i highly advise um checking out crypto coffee's website hackspassiveincome.com and learning the mechanics of how all this works because uh the game theory on this is is really so it's you can't explain it in just uh like a 30 minute stream <laughs> sure you can yeah. hex is the only coin that actually holds yeah. you liable for your yeah. stake so when you say you're going to stake for a length of time it'll hold yeah. literally it'll hold your coins accountable and you will get penalized heavily mm -hmm. if you try to end your stake earlier than you agreed to mm. it, yeah. it me and molly the other fun. day we we uh we did a one hour walkthrough that i was pretty impressed with but yeah mm, if you want okay. it broken down even more in like seven eight hours of content yeah i got a course for that yeah. small fee could change your life yeah, but the the video on my channel that we did with Brian from High Impact Flicks, uh, Coffee and I pretty much walked through Hex from literally buying cryptocurrency from a no-coiner to staking it and then just slightly touching on Pulse Chain at the very end. But yeah, it, being able to condense the full, everything that is Hex, even with the game theory and learning through even T-shares within an hour, is, it's not an easy task for sure. He's got a big oh. following. That was You guys did a really good job. Yeah. I, I mentioned it in the comments, but... Yeah, to uh, Crypto Coffee and Motley, you know, shout out to you guys because you did a really good job of explaining it. And and like you guys mentioned as well, like when the light bulb clicks, you know, sometimes it takes, uh, I mean, I know it did for me, but, uh, you know, a little while for everything to click. And when it does, it's like, holy shit, you know, this is the place to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I want to echo what uh, DCC just said in the chat. Uh, he said we should quote one year share prices, right? And I think that's pretty safe because I personally, in my non-financial advice, I don't really recommend that people go out less than a year with their stakes. You know, you don't really start to reap the interest rewards if it's anything less than one year. I mean, if you're just in it for the price appreciation and you think you're going to make a quick buck, sure. Just but I'm just going to tell you, you're, <laughs> you're, you're kind of in the wrong game because the, the real, real massive gains in this coin and in any coin are made by the long-term holders. So I think one year is a good starting point for people to conceptualize. Uh, 15 years can be overwhelming, right? If you start quoting a 15 year price, people are like, wait, 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 why, why I'm locking for 15 years? Like what? They got to warm up to that idea, right? They got to want the 15 years. So one year I think is a safe kind of like starting bed. Hex, well, Hex's, yeah. Hex's staking mechanism literally gives you the ability to realize those millions of X gains that Bitcoin holders were never able to realize unless they were just retarded and lost their freaking hard drive or something like that. Like that, that was literally the only way anyone can, there's no one on this earth that can hold a cryptocurrency liquid and receive upwards of 6 million X on it and not sell at some point. You're never going to realize those gains, right? Unless you literally have it encoded the penalties of ending your stake early is actually just pure code and you can't physically do it without nuking your stack. You're going to, you're going to, it's going to make your hands diamond hands. It's going to turn your little pleb noodle hands into actual <laughs> diamond hands and you little don't have a choice. Baby hands, bro. Yeah. Your little, your little baby hands, little, it's going to turn them into little. fucking diamond hands. And, and it's, and you're going to be able to realize millions of X when we do them. Whereas a, 
if you were just a trader and you held that liquid, you you sold a long time ago, and you kept buying back higher and higher, and helped helped everyone else that was in the staking class realize those millions of X because you just you just couldn't bring yourself to stake and you just held liquid. Mm -hmm. yeah, so many people they they trade it like uh, like hexes, just like every other <clears throat> cryptocurrency. And, and to your point, it, it's not. And also to uh, to Coffee's point that yeah, if if you're just like speculating and yeah, you don't want to go all in on a 15 year stake. Like nothing says you have to do everything for <clears throat> 15 years or, or even stake in general, right? You can just hold it spot if, if you really want to and, you know, see the, the massive price gains from there. But why not also incentivize yourself to continue holding and to continue delaying gratification, even if it's just a little bit, if your time frame is, is longer than say the average, you're going to be rewarded. And I mean, right now, like I said, it's like, you know, 0.6 or it's like six pennies and just wait for it to go to dollars. And man, it's we're, we're at the beginning. It's really cool to see. Yeah. Sorry, for in through the chat. Yeah. I mean, let's see. Brand rocks. Cool. 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 Uh, guys, how much hex would I have to sacrifice for a pulse token? Probably like one, probably just one hex would be enough. It's a it's a ten thousand to one uh, supply ratio for uh, for pulse to ETH, so it will it won't take much. Whatever you sacrifice in there, and honestly, everyone on the stream right now should whatever coins they are deciding on sacrificing, whether it's hex or other coins, you should convert it into hex beforehand because you want and to pump your own bags, right? And is that going to be all on the ETH ratio, or are they going to take the USD denominated ETH value of that day? And ten thousand to one on that on the USD value. It's just gonna be it ten, ten, it's gonna be ten thousand to one supply. So Ethereum sitting at like right now like one hundred and fifty million tokens. So you're yeah. looking at probably about a one point five trillion. Uh, uh, okay, so if you if you pulse. sacrifice like two Ethereum worth of hex, you would be getting twenty thousand pulse. Right, that's a yep. good example. Thank you, thank you for yep. clearing that up. I gotta yeah, no problem. I gotta write that down. Yeah, and then when you guys are coming in, it's it's all based off your USD value, not uh, not whatever like however many tokens you throw in or anything like that. It's just the USD value you come in, and then actually we can pull up that chart that uh, May, do you uh have that chart? I don't know if I have that ready. The one you sent me with um, what it looks like the sacrifice phase is going to be, where we have the volume um, the volume sacrificing stage, and then the and then the daily increase afterwards. Sure. Wouldn't it just go by not USD value, but rather the the ETH ratio of the ETH to your whatever coin? What's that? No, it's like sacrifice phase is USD value of uh, whatever when you enter your coin. Yeah, but then you're converting it back into the ETH value, right? To get to denominate the pulse. So why not just go directly into the ETH coin ratio? And then rather than go coin USD USD to ETH, you know what I mean? No, I was just saying go coin to hex before you sacrifice it. We no, talk about uh, it. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. I, I, I'm right. not explaining it good. No, you're good. My word is not working good. All right, guys. So this is uh, – this is I, I don't think – has it? do you know if this has actually been confirmed by Richard, Matty, or is this someone in Pulse Chain that actually just made this uh, chart? I know he's talked about doing it like this, but has this uh, chart been confirmed was, by Richard or pinned? This made by somebody in Pulse Chain. Okay. Um, Hexponential. Okay. Uh, trying to uh, trying to visualize what Richard has been thought experimenting. Yeah, his gold, silver, bronze chart of the the volume sacrifice. So if you guys look in the blue, you have your volume sacrifices, and it's going to be a certain day range. I don't know if we have the exact dates yet. So right here on this graph, he just did one to seven days. No advantage for being earlier from any of this time period. So you get into this kind of game theory of trying to write up the pump of hex or maybe people try to sell it could get a little crazy in here but this volume set will be reordered at the end so it goes based off how much usd value you're actually throwing into the sacrifice chamber at this phase so this essentially i think richard talked about this on the stream it's incentivizing the whales to come in and essentially try to out jockey each other for the largest volume sizing during this time window and this way people don't get an absolute massive massive advantage for coming in like a millisecond faster than everyone else this gives everyone a fair 
fair playing field for the first seven days. It's just how much volume are you actually willing to commit to this to actually fall in these different tiers. So you got gold tier here at 2.25x. You have a uh, silver tier at 1.5x, and then you have a 1x at uh, at bronze tier. So this is the volume sacrificing phase. And then if uh, you zoom out real and, quick, with and does this mean that there will be like two people or like two? <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know the significance of five x. Yeah, I don't know the significance of putting multiple ones in there. Okay. Can you zo can you zoom out, Wasabi? Or uh, Maddie? Yeah. So those yeah. first three or that first week is going to be like, there's no time. No advantage. time advantage. It's only, it's only a quantity. It's only a quantity advantage. Yeah, so like you if you're in before the first couple million dollars are in, you're in gold, then silver, then bronze, and then regular sacrifice page, which is yeah, like, exponential based on time. Yeah. Yeah. So if brand throws in like 10 grand during that one to seven days, coffee throws in 25 grand and I throw in 50 grand, then we're going to be essentially in those three different leagues based off how much USD value, how much volume you actually threw in the sacrifice. And the next one right here, seven to 30 days, just like uh, coffee was saying, it just becomes time-based now. So 4.2%. Uh, I don't think Richard's changed that yet per day. So then this just becomes a game of, Hey, is that percentage going up enough in comparison to the hex price? And then you just got to play that little sticky game theory of, do I wait and go up another four, eight, 12, 16%. Or do you and play with the hex price speculation, or do you just you just go for it? So this is a great think, visual, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they did right. they did a great job. But I mean, I think obviously depending on where the price of hex is, uh, the volume. If you're actually going to come in with some serious volume, that might be your best time. But then once we get out here to the days, seven to thirty days, like you could really see some crazy hex price appreciation that might just counteract everything that we had. And the volume sacrifice phase. I don't. I don't know. It could. It could be very interesting. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun to watch and play with the numbers. See what works. What what the optimal strategy is and what price points ha hex has to hit to actually. If you have a bag of hex that you're actually converting, that's that's the other question. How much of your hex bag are you gonna convert? Because as you guys have seen, as as well as Pulse is gonna do, you probably don't want to sacrifice your entire hex bag, or you might not want to sacrifice any of it. You might want to just convert a different bag at this point because we already showed you guys you're going to at least 20 30 cents pretty quickly but yeah it's a cool chart very cool chart and then um is this going to be in combination with like a time weighted thing so that people can't send obscure coins that they've pumped up and then they dump because i thought that that was part of it too so like you would get like a so the price of hex is basically averaged over a week so that nobody has an advantage for but maybe that's not true i don't know about that i think i i, I think it is just like the usd value of the coin when you put it in the sacrifice uh chamber i'm not i'm not sure about the weighted uh weight average or not but i ha i haven't been in the polls chain chat so we actively could, for a while now so, so I maybe know. we need to launch like a faux motley coin and like <laughs> pump it up really hard right before we send it or something <laughs> that would be nice yeah someone uh someone get on it launch us uh the next meme coin we'll uh <laughs> we'll, we'll work with uh carol baskins and her cat coin see if we can yeah. uh, if we can edge in on the on the dog coin market i made a note to message her do it pulse do it i'm curious <laughs> but yeah cool chart i would love i hope the sacrifice phase happens before vegas <laughs> otherwise we're not yeah, gonna ever yeah. we're all gonna leave dinner fucking go <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, go come, <laughs> like come on richard like <laughs> no one's like able to actually go out and do anything because we all one we <laughs> yeah that's just bad because everyone no, no. you can't you can't yeah, no. bring your fucking shit like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all bad. Everybody all flies bad. home really quick. <laughs> oh my god, I'd have to like, I have to. Like, I'd fly home. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd fly have home. to. <laughs> I'd have to like walk my roommate through like what I want to do. Yeah, that would just no. That'd be. <laughs> wait, Richard, <laughs> do not wait till Vegas. God, that would suck. <laughs> now, I I think if it you if won't. it. If it if it doesn't land this this weekend, I think it'll definitely land next week for sure. I can't see him going longer than another week over what he initially well, said. Here, here's what here's what's really happening, right? He's I I think he's basically just waiting <laughs> to see how high the price can pump on its own with no announcement because you know yep. once, yeah. once there's an announcement, this, this thing is gonna pump once there's an announcement, no matter what. 
because we have official set in stone. But if it's doing this well without an announcement, he's probably just going to let it ride. Until take advantage. Take advantage. He sees of some it. weakness. Yeah. And then once yeah. there's a little bit of weakness, boom, announcement, even more FOMO. Yeah. And right now we're in the early adopters. So like we, most people don't even, haven't even heard about it yet. When the actual thing is live and announced, that's when people are going to all hop in and truly ape. Like yeah. that we've never seen. And, and that's why he's such a good marketer, right? Like that's why like, day one he uh when he put that tweet out about the sacrifice phase taking place in seven days like knew we knew it was a possibility that it wasn't going to come out in seven days but like how are you not going to act on that news it was me yeah. and wasabi and dc in the green room and we're like fuck it like we all ran and grabbed our shit and started buying yeah. like that we knew where the, we knew where we were going i think it was 2.7 cents right at that tweet and oh, yeah. so we all we all instantly bought and then we were like fuck it we'll go live again because it's that big of news yeah. like that yeah i, I, that, I converted all my shit coins that day that yep. day was because nice. i was like why wait why i know it's gonna happen why bother waiting right yeah like, well, I, think I, about yeah i tweeted him i was like you're you're an evil genius when it comes to marketing <laughs> i was like damn you it was yeah. like my all-time high buy at the time but i mean even after that i still bought it like 4.7 yeah. cents later it's just like what, yeah. it, you know think yeah. about how many people didn't get into hex and now they see it a thousand something x later and they're like okay richard's doing a, another project and this time it's going to be you know similar to an evm and fork of ethereum like we're not going to miss this one, and, and I uh, I definitely think that the participation is going to be a lot higher than than what we've seen with Hex. And, and like Richard had mentioned, wouldn't it be cool to see like billions of dollars being sacrificed? And and I also agree with Coffee's point that the second that that's that that's announced, that okay, sacrifice phase starts today or this day, it's just going to fucking pump to twenty five cents, fifty cents, you know, dollar stuff like this, and just. You know, with the liquidity that we have and with the amount of capital that's coming in, it's very feasible for the numbers to just keep jumping up like we've seen. Hey, Wasabi, real real quick, can you pull up a leaping leads question? Um, uh, yeah. It's a little mis uh, not worried. Did I... right that's good. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. If you can't see it, okay, yeah. So I, I think what he's asking is if, like, if you get a bunch of people together and like pool, especially during like the volume uh, aspect of the sacrificing phase. So like the one to seven days, a really cool thing uh, for you guys that are maybe a little bit newer and don't know, there was a dev, uh, we call him <laughs> Dev Kyle. Very, very smart guy, used to work for uh, Netflix and he helped with a lot of the game theory and modeling of Hex. And he built a smart contract during the adoption amplifier where everyone could pull their money together and it would every day it would take a percentage of that pool and put it in the adoption amplifier and then at the end it dispersed all the funds to everyone that's actually a really good idea leaping leads if someone was able like uh someone a developer was actually able to do a contract where everyone could trustlessly put in their money and they could essentially become a bigger bigger whale than what they'd be able to do on their own <laughs> And take a larger chunk of that volume during that that sacrifice phase. That would be a that'd be a cool idea if someone wants to build that. I know uh, I know Dev Kyle is pretty busy these days, so I don't know if he'd be able to do it. But uh, we definitely have some smart developers in the community that could definitely uh, definitely do that. I imagine it's a good idea. It's a good idea for sure. <laughs> Brad. All right, boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, uh, just reading a, a few more comments in the chat. Coinbase is locked at it... point. Oh, sorry, never mind. Oh, that's not that... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> hmm. Is Dev Kyle working on Pulse? Do we know? Uh, I don't believe so. Or at least I don't think he's publicly saying anything about it. I think he's just too busy with, uh, his daily life now but uh I, I i hope he is i'm sure i'm sure richard reaches out to him when he's got questions just because uh he always seems to offer a good take on everything i'd even argue that dev kyle explains stuff um explains things better than even richard at times he's very very good at that what's the golden thing <laughs> uh, well, it, it was it was it wasn't the it wasn't the golden so there, there wasn't there wasn't the golden chart we looked at basically uh <clears throat> moon math projections which i i think are more they're pretty realistic actually the the, the numbers that um 
that crypto coffee was was mentioning earlier but basically just the as, as far as the golden chart like even some of that stuff I'll, I'll just basically throw breadcrumbs like there's actually some breadcrumbs there uh but i'm not gonna basically disclose like what the the golden <laughs> chart is until literally we're we're at the end of this <clears throat> um there, there, there's there's kind of a mentality that people want to see the golden chart but uh, you could even see there's comments from uh, Silver the Antidote earlier in the chat. <laughs> antidote. And then, or, did, I, did I mention that? Part? I, I just saw no, Silver. That was just uh, funny how you said Antidote. Antidote, Antidote. Yeah, yeah. so there, Silver mentioned some comments, and the, the reason why it's better not to disclose that information, let me see if I could find it, if it's still in the chat. But basically, he mentions, uh, you know, this thing with, like, a whale wallet. So the reality is, with every coin every single coin there are whale wallets that they basically distribute supply and <clears throat> the earlier they do it the better it is for price appreciation because they do it at lower price level so it's easier to push the prices higher and those are those are the wallets that are going to get knocked out of this game forever i mean <clears throat> uh, every stage of the way we even saw this after big payday there was literally wallets with like two to three hundred million hex that got drained yep, and now they they can't they can buy like two percent of their stack now God. so the, this this the, the and people they don't realize this like right now there's volume entering the market and <clears throat> even the the whale wallets it's not it's really not that much in terms of usd value that it, that very easily ETH whales that holds, you know, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of ETH can easily buy up supply at, at these levels. So um, this game goes on for every single market impulse. There's a, a washout that happens during these impulsive waves. So um, the earlier the better. But uh, so far, <clears throat> so far, the in in terms of the the price appreciation and performance. Uh, things are looking pretty good, at least for the golden chart thus far. Um, so yeah, there at best I would say breadcrumbs. But if you want, uh, if you actually want in-depth market data, let's actually pull this up. Um, it, so Gerard, Gerard mentioned that. Sorry, I Gerard. So, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you actually want really good market data, let's pull up the the website here. Um, check out uh, lookintohex.com. Um, we'll pull up. We'll pull it up on the on the share screen here. So this is actually Gerardo. This is his. Uh, he made this website here. Rainbow and there's, charts. <laughs> there's actually really good. Uh, there's really good information here because it, it gives you uh, more data to look at in terms of the market cycle of hex. So for example, on this website here, look into hex. Uh, you can see basically the plots that uh, Gerardo has up here. So for example, you have hex versus Bitcoin. So you see where Hex is at in relation to Bitcoin. You see where Hex is at in relation to Ethereum and then um, some other data points and then videos you can check out if you want. You did a great job. Um, yeah, this is a really good website. This yeah. is a really good website, very useful. And so um, awesome. you can get uh, really good information by watching the videos because it's kind of a, if you, it, it's it's kind of, it's basically the uh, a Ben Cohen version of like the data analytics okay. specialized Precise. for Hex. And it's yep. very, very useful because it, it gives you, um, it gives you another perspective when you look at things on much longer time frames. And that's why I truly believe like even whale wallets that are considered whales today are not going to be able to buy anywhere close to the same amount of supply in the future. Um, they do not understand how, high these impulsive waves go and what that means in terms of what you can buy back in the future so uh, as there are only a few bitcoin whales today in 10 to 15 years uh we'll see who's left standing and uh, i mean a lot of, there's going to be plenty of og hexagons for sure uh, but there is going to be a washout along these impulsive waves for for those that take um take their chance at the wrong time so uh the people have been warned multiple times and they're they're gonna get washed out so yeah unless you got friends. the golden chart don't take a chance it's not worth mm. it but if you got the golden chart maybe, maybe. well like you mentioned too yeah. if someone's gonna have like 100 million uh say hex per se like even even peter that unstaked it like you'd rather want them to sell earlier than later i mean mm. even in that video that motley reposted which thank you by the way he got like 126 ethereum and it's like man 
if you look at where it's at now, and if you were to have that big of a bag and then dump it, it would cause a more significant price dump. So yeah. rather get them out early and then let For the sure. diamond hands take care of the rest. Yeah, and it goes to the whole thing. There's, there's some, and this isn't true for 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 all whales, but there's there's smart whales, and then there's dumb whales, and there's already been a lot of dumb whales that have been washed out of the market and can't buy back their coins. And I would say that it kind of follows the, uh, it goes with the whole they call it like the Pareto principle, where it's like the eighty twenty rule. You'll have eighty percent dumb whales, and then twenty percent smart whales, and then basically the twenty percent smart whales ultimately get the pie. Um, over these longer periods of time. So uh, just kind of the almost the 80, the 80, 20 rule of, of life. That's just how a lot of things tend to work out. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, if you, again, if you, if you want good data, check out uh, look into hacks. I think what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to end the stream here, but before we go, um, let's first start off um, with Motley. Uh, Motley, where can everybody follow you? Yep, Motley Investor on YouTube, on Twitter, on Telegram. Um, if you guys ever need anything, feel free to reach out to me. If I got time, I'll definitely uh, definitely help you out, especially if you're new. Uh, just be careful, though. Obviously, there's people that take our identities and pretend to be us. So if you need to confirm it or anything like that, I'm always willing to go on, do a video stream like this. I'll invite you back to a green room so you can actually see you're dealing with me or voice chat or something like that. Uh, maybe not even voice chat, but... Uh, yeah, if you ever need help, you can find me, find me anywhere, Motley Investor. Sure. And how about you, Maddie? I am at Maddie All In, M A T I All In, on everything except allmylinks.com slash all in. Cool. Sweet. And uh, Crypto Coffee? Yeah, hexpassiveincome.com. If you're brand new to crypto and you want to learn how to get in from the very, very beginning. Otherwise, all you guys are OGs, but you know, it'd be up whenever you want. I'm in uh, Telegram. And if you just want to talk, hang out, you know, shoot the shit, do whatever. I, I give a lot of advice for free too. So, you know, if you, if you want to talk about more pulse chain stuff, you know, I'm kind of just as much of a, a pleb as, all, as everybody else in the pulse chain game because it's a new thing and we're all trying to discover it at the same time. So it's, it's fun and uh, I'm excited for the future. I'm just, I'm so pumped. Like, I know I'm really tired right now, but I am freaking pumped guys it's gonna Can't be tell great right now but i'm so <laughs> ecstatic <laughs> uh, uh cool. that's it well and uh, uh brand brand hammer go. you can find me at a uh, valiant brand pretty much on all the social medias if uh if you don't know which ones i'm on you can just also go to the link right there where my name is just all my links.com slash valiant brand and i do streams every uh every sunday at 2 p.m pacific standard time actually got a stream with another OG hexagon, uh, Timothy Benjamin. So that'll be uh, this Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And yeah, thanks for having us on. You know, I always look forward to the stream and it's cool to uh, be around like-minded individuals that also have like different opinions on how things are going to go. And we can all talk about like strategies and what might be the best way to go about things, you know? So it's a really exciting time. It's a really exciting opportunity. Like I said, if you missed the the first project that uh richard did you know don't miss the second one mm. <laughs> amen yeah amen. absolutely <clears throat> and then uh yeah you can find me look into crypto twitter youtube uh make sure to like the video subscribe like seriously subscribe like we put out these videos and, <laughs> and make sure you subscribe to everybody's youtube channel that's that's on here too i mean that's just it's common courtesy for a lot of this free content that this amazing community gives out um, on the daily. So uh, just return the favor and then just subscribe to um, everybody's social media outlet. So the, gold, the, the, golden, the golden chart will yeah. come. It will come. Yeah, it, it is gonna. It is gonna come. And perhaps it. Maybe perhaps we'll just we'll give out. We'll give it out as a as a free. We'll free just give alpha. it out as an, a free, free <laughs> well, even just like a, an NFT that will we'll just, if somebody wants a golden chart NFT, then that, that would be, that would be kind yeah. of fun to do at the end. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, give it so, out for free. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we'll, we'll call it there and uh, we'll see you guys at the next round table. I believe, um, uh, who's the next toast? Is it, I guess it's probably crypto coffee, Co I think, coffee, I'll, I'll coffee right. or brand. All right. You got to be there. Coffee, You got it. You got <laughs> I'll this. show up. All right, cool. I'm GST <laughs> on the dot. Sounds right. good. Tim See P. You guys P. Guys P. Guys P. 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 East Coast guys. Cool. Later, right. guys. See you guys. Peace out. Peace out.